everyone. Welcome to Sewing Talk Tuesday. My name is Anissa. I am the crafty author and welcome to my messy craft room today. Um, we are working on rag quilts. So I am getting all my rag quilts done to get ready to list them in my Etsy store over Labor Day weekend. So the sale will run from September 4th through September 7th, 20% off. So I'm stocking up my store. Brandon pan over there and show them all the minky that we bought. Minky and terry cloth that we got the other day at Joanne's. 50% off that minky was. So I just picked up the bolts that were left. And as you know, I've been shopping and buying tons of flannel fabric over the last couple of months and I have tons of it. So I'm just trying to get as much done as I possibly can. I'll be putting some burp cloths in there, some baby bibs. And I'm probably going to run out of batting <laughs> at some point. So I probably need to place another order because this is my second roll of batting. And we have already gone through one roll of batting, just doing um, quilts together on video. So yeah, it's good fun times. So Brandon is helping me out a lot. So he's doing the cutting and all that stuff with the AccuQuilt Studio 2. Um, I have a video on that. So if you're interested in how that works, be sure to check out that uh, playlist. It's called Rag Quilts and you'll be able to see all the rag quilts that I've made. And you'll get to see all the different machines that I have and the dyes that I have. So, um, but this is my business. I do rag quilts, baby bibs, um, burp cloths. I also have keepsake bags with little receiving blankets that I make with my awesome serger. And so, yeah, I just have a lot of fun down here making all this stuff. I'm a little stressed out today because I got a lot to do. <laughs> did you show them that blanket? I did. It's so super cute. That one was made using the 12-inch uh, die that I bought um, from AccuQuilt for my Studio 2. So that one is really, really cool. I love the bigger squares. I really, really like those. Plus, they're faster to make. All right, so here we go. Here's the big roll. So what I do is I leave it in the bag so that it doesn't get dirty. Because uh, you know. everything it does. Because everything does. And usually I have everything cleared off my table here, but I don't right now. So I just roll it and I roll it <laughs> and I keep rolling until I get to where I think I'm going to have enough just to kind of get me by. And since I don't really want to do this again, I'm going to cut a lot. So I need those scissors. So when you have a big roll like this, um, as you can see, it's bigger than my cutting table and bigger than my cutting mat. So you really have to just kind of guess when you're making like small squares like that because you're cutting individual squares of batting. Um, for the 12-inch squares, I do 10-inch batting squares in between. Um, when I make a quilt, since this is doubled, and many of you have seen me do this, this is doubled, what I will do is I will lay the quilt out on top of the batting and then I cut the batting so that I know how much I need that way. And I usually use two tables to do that. So. But Brandon was actually asking me how I cut all the batting. So I told him, I'll show you. <laughs> so now he's down here and he's holding the camera. And he thinks it's a lot of fun. Yes, yes. Arts and crafts. Yeah, it's fun. Right. So you can see we're starting to get kind of, we're getting low on batting. So we'll have to make another order. I get asked a lot about what batting I'm using. This is the batting that I am using right here. I got this from Joann's when they had a nice big sale. I had two of these rolls. They're awesome. I actually really like this batting. Um, it is a little bit, it does have some lint to it, but not bad. So um, if you're 
interested in getting some batting. That's what you do. And then I just I keep it in its bag just to protect it. And I just tuck that in and then I just put it back in this little Rubbermaid tub that I have over here in the corner. And that's how I store it. So really not much to it. And then I have all this batting now that I can use to cut squares. So this will probably honestly make, judging by this, I can tell you this will probably do about five quilts. So not too shabby. So yeah. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just working around here and um, I've already got some more of these cut, as you can see. Really cute. I decided to make a couple. So we of... just have some more Minky. And we have this really cute little baby sloth with the mama sloth in the tree. And I'm using, oh, so you know, um, when you're working with Minky, Minky is a pain in the rump. Um, I use 505 spray. To hold it together so that seems to hold it and keep it from moving around when I take it to the sewing machine um, it does take a little more time when you're working with minky I find that if I put the minky down this is a trick I had to pull one of them apart um, if I put the minky face down and I make sure that I spray it really well and then I put the batting right down here in the center and then I can take a top like this and then I just set it down on top evenly and it goes a whole lot quicker this way and then I lift this up and I spray that with my 505 and push it down and then I pull this back and do the same thing I find that that keeps it really nice and even here and then I don't have to worry so much about the minky slipping. Because if I do the minky on top, and I keep the, the flannel piece on the bottom, I find that this doesn't lay as flat. It doesn't go together as well. It's all over the place. So that's just a little tip if you're working with minky. Because minky is one of those things that is crazy to work with so anyway so that's it so i thought i would show you all what i've done um with these rag quilts so i've on average i've been making probably about three a day um these ones take me a little bit longer the smaller ones to put together but just because there's more pieces but you can see that this is what i have here and they've already been washed once and so um, that's what's causing this ragging. I know I've shown you guys some of these when they're not washed. So I get a lot of questions about what these rag quilts look like um, once they've been washed. This is minky, or I'm sorry, cuddle fabric with flannel. And you can see how that is fuzzing up really nicely. Um, the cuddle and the minkies don't really bunch up quite like the flannel. That's why it's important to have um, a flannel or cotton because those do rag really, really nicely. So this is one of the ones that will be for sale um, on in my Etsy shop. I'll show you the next one here. I've got a couple, excuse me. I'm holding this with my hand and because um, I just want to show you and we're at my dining room table. So this one has cotton and it also has that cuddle and so this is um, a cotton and cuddle blanket. And again, you can see how this rags really well. The cotton actually, I find rags the best, um, but flannel rags really nice too, as you just saw. So here's the cuddle with the, with the cotton and um, it's really, really cute. Again, here's some cotton. Now this one is cotton right here. Okay, and then the back of this one is flannel. So let me get to that and show you. 
and then you can see right here. And I still have to go through and uh, lint roll all of this. These are out of the dryer, but you can see the that when they come out, they're still a bit messy. And so um, it takes a couple washings for that to kind of go away. So, okay. And then there's this one. Now this one is all um, cotton on the front. There's no cuddle on the front here. And then on the back, you have the flannel. Okay, so you can see here how well that rags together. It's just really nice, it looks great. Here is one with the bigger squares. Um, so this is minky now, and then this is flannel. And you can see how nice that looks right there. It's just a really, really pretty. Like I said, minky and cuddle don't really rag, but they go nice in a rag quilt. This is the back, it's flannel. There's two of those. So I'm not gonna show you the other one because it's the same. But this one here is a little bit different. These are the little baby sloth ones that I like for little girls. Um, again, the minky with the flannel. So, and it also has the same backing. I think this one has a different colored. This one has more of a pink backing than this one. I ran out of this super, super pink one and had to go to this lighter pink one. You can't even hardly tell the difference. So anyway, so that is what I have. And I just wanted to take the time to show you what it all looks like. And when I do my, um, when I finish sewing my blankets, I do this nice little wavy stitch along the edge here. And this holds everything together. See, I go all the way around the blanket with that. And um, it just looks nice and gives it a really neat look. See? So that's it. it I am just going to continue working. Um, Friday is the block of the month. So be on the lookout for that. And that's it. If you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to share it because sharing is caring and click that little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload a new video and that's it. Keep on crafting. See you next time. Bye.